Why is instantaneous power flow important? Because people talk about average power and RMS power, why do we need to know about the instantaneous power? And before we get into this, I'd like to make a special call out to Thanduk Nguyen and Jorg Nazal, who are the first two people to join up to the YouTube membership program for this channel. Thanks for joining. Uh, welcome any more people to join. Uh, it really does help me to make these videos. So let's get into it. Here we've got a circuit which shows a source, might be a power supply, a socket in your house, and the current is flowing along a wire into the load. And the load might be a fridge, a washing machine, whatever you've got uh, that's using AC alternating current power. That's what we're talking about here. So here's the a couple of examples of waveforms of the voltage and current. And here I'm showing it for a frequency, an oscillating frequency of one hertz. Of course, in your house, it would be 60 hertz or 50 hertz, depending on the country that you're in. Um, but I'm just going to show one hertz here for simplicity. Um, that corresponds, of course, to an omega naught of two pi in radians. I've shown an example here where there's an, a phase difference between the voltage and the current, and I've shown it for 60 degrees. And this is going to be very important to understand this instantaneous power. So let's write down some equations for the voltage and the current. Uh, here they are, very simple equations showing that phase difference. And the power, of course, is the multiplication of those two, the voltage and the current. So I've just written them down here. Now you can use some high school maths to take the multiplication of two cos terms and rewrite it as the summation of two cos terms, which is what I've done here. And we notice that the first term doesn't depend on time. The second term does depend on time and it's oscillating at twice the frequency of the voltage and the current. So let's see this equation in the waveform. Here I've exactly multiplied the top two waveforms to show the power. And one thing you can see first off is that there's an average power here, which is the first term in the function here. So this is where this is the cos alpha term, which does not vary with time. This is the average power that you would be thinking about if you were mostly concentrating on average power. Of course, it's related to the RMS power. Uh, I'm going to cover those in a future video on the channel. But one thing you also notice when you look at the instantaneous power is that it goes negative. And that's an interesting thing that you cannot really ignore. So here I've highlighted the time periods when it's negative, and you can see that it corresponds to situations where the voltage and the current have opposite polarities. And when you think about it, that makes sense. It's the power is the multiplication of the two. So if one of them is positive and the other one's negative, then the power will be negative. What does this mean? Well, when we think about our circuit diagram here, if the voltage has the positive polarity that's shown, then a negative current means that the current is flowing in the other direction. And that means that the power is flowing in the other direction. And if you only thought about average power, this could easily trick you up. So here we've got a situation where most of the time the power is flowing into the load, but for periods of time, power is actually flowing back from the load into the source. Let's think of two extreme cases to get more visual on this. Here's a case when alpha equals zero and the current and phase are perfectly, the current and voltage are perfectly in phase. And you can see here that the power is always positive. This is alpha equals zero. So the first term down here has cos of zero, which equals one. So this average term is the biggest that it can be. And the second term never is bigger than that. So either positive or negative in magnitude. So the overall power is always positive. And this happens when the load is purely resistive. And then all the power is flowing into the load. Here's the other extreme when alpha equals 90 degrees. And in this case, you can very quickly see that the average power is zero. So if you are only thinking about average power, you'd be very easily tricked in this situation because you might think that not much is happening. And you might, if you're only thinking of average power, you might be just thinking that there's not much current flow or much voltage change. When in fact, there can be quite a bit of current flow. So when the power is positive, the current is flowing uh, or the power is flowing into the load, 
when the power is uh, negative, it's flowing back into the source. There can be quite a lot of power flowing in this wire, quite a lot of current flowing in this wire. So if you design your circuit and you don't allow for that high, potentially high current, then you could get into problems. For example, if you design it with a wire that is not uh, thick enough, then it won't be able to carry the current, the high, potentially high current and depending on how high these peaks are in the instantaneous power. And that could melt the wire and then you get an open circuit and it's a catastrophic failure for you. So you really must understand instantaneous power. In this case where the average is zero, we call this purely reactive power. But there's a bit more subtlety to reactive power. I'm gonna cover that in a video to come out later on the channel. If we return to our alpha equals 60, just to our one final observation, and that is you might be interested in the proportion of time that your power is flowing in the, let's say, wrong direction, in the direction opposite to what you want it to be. So that is a can be calculated with a very simple formula, uh, and you can calculate this for yourself, fairly straightforward manner. The proportion of time that it's negative is the modulus of alpha divided by 180. And we can see that here in this example, uh, 60 degrees is alpha. So the proportion of time is one third. And you can clearly see that here, that a third of the time it's negative and then two thirds positive, one third negative. So that's a very simple relationship, which helps you relate the phase offset to the proportion of time. So if this video has helped you to understand this concept, please like the video, it helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check out the description below. You'll find a link to a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.